Ladies and gentlemen, kindly welcome Professor Michael Morto. Thank you very much for that very kind introduction. It's a privilege for me to be considered with these distinguished guests who are in front of us and who are speaking in the program today. Again, I'm speaking on behalf of a number of scientists in the United States and other parts of the, of the world who are interested in understanding the immunology of PERS virus. So you see, I not only work with people at the University of Minnesota, but in other institutions throughout the U.S. Our work is funded by people who are committed to improving swine health, including the U.S. government, uh, the state, and individual companies. The, pro the reason that we are interested in PERS and the immunology of PERS is because this is a disease that devastates the swine industry. Standard typical knowledge that guides vaccine development appears not to work very well. The predictions not work very well for PERS. So we are trying to understand how the virus interacts with pigs and use that knowledge to develop better means of controlling infection. So, so the, we, there are a number of questions that we want to ask about the virus. Is the immune response to PERS virus effective? Does it work to get rid of the virus? What is the mechanism? How does it work? What is the mechanism or what is needed in a vaccine or an exposure to the virus to stimulate protection? Okay. We like to use measures of immunity to predict how well protection works and how well vaccine works. So we will look at some information we have on immune correlates of protection and of vaccine efficacy. A key question, does immunity give cross protection? Vaccines are based on single strains of virus. Is it, do these strains provide protection to other strains in the field, the virulent strains that cause the problems? And then putting all of this information together, what is the role of immunity in a comprehensive program for controlling PERS? I want to emphasize that high pathogenicity Chinese PERS virus is not the only PERS virus strain that causes severe, severe disease. And we can see here, this is a recent isolate in the U.S. When it infects negative sow herds, we see a total loss in production, 100% pre-weaning mortality, and high levels of sow mortality, more than 60% in a, in a several week period. This is not only one farm. The second farm, we see the same kinds of very severe losses. Okay? <clears throat> but if you look at other farms, this is an example of unprotected pigs infected with virulent PERS. If we look at other farms, down on the bottom of the slide, Herds that have been exposed to other strains, so herds that are already exposed to PERS virus, demonstrate cross protection. In other words, in this herd, this same 118.2 virus was found, but there were no clinical signs. So there are two very important points that I want to make from this information. One is that in the field, there's good evidence of cross protection. Immunity to one PERS virus can protect against infection with another virus. The second issue relates to diagnostics. How did the, the veterinarian for this herd know that the same virus, that, that this virulent virus was in a herd with no clinical signs? That's because the veterinarian was doing very good diagnostics, taking serum samples and analyzing by PCR for presence of PERS virus even though there was no evidence of disease. And when they got a positive sample, they sequenced it. So they knew that they had the virulent virus in the herd. That's very good diagnostics. And that's one of the messages that I want to give to you, that, that diagnostics is very important in controlling PERS. Okay. So 
What is the immune response to PERS virus? Here we're looking at viremia. If you give pigs PERS virus, you see a rapid increase in virus in the blood. And then it declines over time, and, you can, and for a long period of time afterwards, you cannot find the virus again. This says that there is some kind of immune response to the virus. It declines, and it's effective. We do not see recurring waves of viremia that would indicate lack of, of good protection. Okay? So not only does the immune response of the pig control infection, but if you give it enough time, it completely eliminates the virus. And we know that, again, from veterinarians in the field who, in trying to get rid of PERS virus in pig herds, found that you could close a herd for more than 200 days. So you make sure every pig sees the virus, then you wait a long period of time. And after this long period of time, you can put pigs back into the herd and they stay negative. This tells us that the virus is completely gone from pigs and it is gone from the environment. Okay? So again, the important lesson is that pigs are able to mount a completely effective immune response to PERS virus, but it takes a much longer time than we are accustomed to for other viral diseases. Okay? So, in, so we need to understand how pigs respond to PERS virus to develop better methods for, for immune protection. We cannot wait 200 days. We need something that works faster. So the ideas about, about protective immunity are demonstrated here. We think of three kinds of information. The first is that infection induces some kind of danger signal that says that we have a problem. We now call these things toll-like receptors. The indicators that, that, that show an innate immune response happens is interferon alpha, okay, which is produced and, and tells cells we have a problem, and cytokines. This innate immune response, we think, is important because it induces an antigen-specific adaptive response that produces cytotoxic T cells and antibodies, neutralizing antibodies that are, that are normally the key to controlling infection. So we will be looking to see if these things appear to be keys to controlling PERS virus infection. And the third thing, again down at the bottom, that, that is a key measure for vaccine efficacy is what we call an anamnestic response. An anamnestic response is a very rapid and high level of antibody production in, pig, in, in protected animals that happens when they get rechallenged. So we will be looking at data. We will ask what happens in pigs that are, that are immune to PERS when they get rechallenged. Do we see this anamnestic response? Okay. So just as a reminder, we will be looking at antiviral immunity in the pig. The innate response, do we see interferons and cytokines? Does this stimulate an adaptive response that we can measure in a cell-mediated immunity and by the production of antibodies? Are these important for PERS? Okay. Christine von Riet in Europe at Ghent University did a very good experiment where she showed that typical virus infections of pigs induce large amounts of interferon alpha and either one or another kinds of inflammatory cytokines at the site of infection in lungs early in the first three days. But PERS virus does not. Essentially, no interferon alpha, no or very delayed response to inflammatory cytokines. So this tells us right away that, that there is something different about the immune response of pigs to PERS virus. Then the question will be, does this, is this lack of an innate response translated into a, a, a weak adaptive response? But surprisingly, the answer is no. There is a good 
antibody response to PERS virus infection. If we look over on the right side, the immediate response, antibody response, the IgM kind good. of isotype, to several different PERS virus proteins. Okay? It's just as good as to a standard test antigen keyhole lymphocyte hemocyanin. In immunology, IgM changes to IgG, and again, we see good antibody responses to many different viral proteins. So even though there appears to be a weak innate response, we see a good antibody response. Okay. But if we look a little more carefully, it, it's not completely typical. And here we're looking at the cells that make the antibodies, uh, plasma cells in different lymphoid compartments that, act, that, that secrete IgM and IgG. We see that they are high in, in sternal lymph node and spleen. They are, where we, they are where we find the virus. That's good. But the peak of production at 30 or 40 or 50 days is after the decline in virus. So even though we see a good antibody response, it looks like a lot of it is happening after virus has been, has been controlled. Okay, so again, the, the peak of viremia occurs uh, uh, early and we see antibodies after the virus is cleared from the blood. Okay, that's antibodies. What about the cell-mediated immunity? Again, and, and I apologize if you have seen this slide many times before, but it makes the point that there is no relationship between the cell-mediated immune response measured in pigs and the amount of virus. If you look in acute infection, okay, no relationship between amount of virus and, and the interferon gamma secreting cells, the, the cell-mediated immune measure, and in persistent infection, even though virus is much reduced, again, there still is no relationship. So it suggests that, that T cells may not have a key role in controlling PERS virus infection. And a different group in Europe reached a similar conclusion uh, in a different kind of system. Here they asked the question, if we kill the T cells in a pig, so there are no T cells, will they now suffer a more severe reaction to PERS virus? So they depleted cytotoxic T cells, but they found it did not make disease worse. Okay, their, their statement from their paper is that the depletion of T cells early in infection did not make disease worse, nor did it affect how well the pig was able to clear the virus. So we have two pieces of information that again tell us that, the, that the, the response of pigs to PERS is different than how many animals respond to infection. But remember, we can see in the field that un, if you give uh, pigs long enough, they will cure the infection. But this is another piece of information more recently obtained that says that, that we have to be careful in, in, in the ways we collect information and how we interpret it. Because this slide shows that, that the age of pigs is very important to how well they are able to control a primary PERS virus challenge. And here we're looking at three week old pigs infected with a virulent virus High level of viremia very early, long time before it is cleared. We saw this before. Vaccine virus to, given to the same pigs, again, it takes a long time for young pigs to get rid of the virus. Okay. 15 week old pigs, finishing pigs, we see they are more resistant to infection. Lower level of viremia and a much shorter time of, of, of viremia. They are able to control this infection much faster and sows are the same. And vaccine virus, because it's attenuated for growth in pigs, grows less well, and again, it is eliminated in, in a short period of time. So this says that older pigs 
are more resistant to infection than, than young pigs. It also means that vaccine in older pigs is going to have less of an, uh, of a, of, of an immune stimulation than it will in young pigs. So an implication here, if you cut vaccines in old pigs, you may be asking for trouble. Now this slide shows that older pigs have a higher level of innate resistance to infection. But so then we said, well, do they have less of an immune response? And this was an interesting result as well. If we look at, at the oldest pigs, sows, given the weakest virus, the vaccine virus, we still see that these animals in, in the brown circles here had an immune response that was just as strong as young pigs given virulent viruses. So even though there is a reduced ability of the virus to grow in old pigs, the amount of virus in those pigs stimulated what looks like a full immune response. Okay, so there's a difference between the ability of pigs to, to resist viral infection and the ability to mount an immune response. Okay. So we have some answers to some of these questions that, that we are interested in. Is there an anti-PERS virus immune response and is it effective? We, the answer is, is yes. It can work. It doesn't mean it always works under all conditions. What is the mechanism of protection? The mechanism is not known. We see antibody responses. They do not explain what we, the, the, the clearance of infection. We see T cell responses. They do not explain control of infection. One way to understand what might be responsible is to ask what is, stimu what is needed, what, in, what is necessary when you give pigs uh, a vaccine or some kind of material or virus, what is needed to stimulate protection, and what are the immune correlates. So as we move forward, I will summarize a lot of knowledge in one or two slides here. The bottom line is that to stimulate protection against PERS, you need to have active virus replication in the pig. If you, t if you take full virus and inactivate it, so it's, so it's killed or it's equivalent to an autogenous vaccine where you grow a virulent virus and inactivate it, you fail to induce a measurable immune response. So killed vaccine, shown here, fails to induce a measurable immune response, whereas live virus under any condition, you can take attenuated virus and freeze it and thaw it, and it works just as well as live virus given two times, live virus given once, followed by inactivated virus, adjuvants. Live virus by itself appears to stimulate the strongest immune response in pigs. Following challenge, then you can see the immune response to the challenge virus, and then you see the only then do you see an immune response to, pe the, to pigs given a killed vaccine. So many other studies have been, to, have been done to give purified proteins or DNA vaccines expressing individual proteins of PERS virus. All of the data consistently shows that the only way to induce an effective immune response and provide protection to pigs requires giving them something that includes a live virus growing in the pig. Okay. This is another study done at Iowa State University which comes to the same conclusion. And I, and I emphasize... Oh, I have to go back here. We're way ahead, okay. So the, the, the magnitude and duration of viremia, so, so how bad is the infection? It was not different between killed product and unvaccinated pigs, okay? So, so if you want to control virus infection, you need to use uh, something that includes a live virus of, of one kind or another.
The key to inducing protection against a future challenge requires that you establish some kind of memory in an animal so that it can remember seeing a pathogen once and then it responds better the next time it sees it. And, and the, the memory in, for antibodies is produced by memory B cells. So one of the things we did, we asked when are memory B cells produced, do they last a long time? And, and it's clear from these results that in many different tissues of lymphoid tissues of the pig, memory B cells are produced to, to many different PERS virus antigens. So even though it takes a long time to clear infection from pigs, it's not due to a delayed memory re response. The memory response is robust, it's strong, and, it, and it's durable. It lasts a long time. Okay. Now we will move to looking at what happens when you challenge pigs that have been immunized already. And as we have seen many times, pigs given PERS virus one time are highly resistant to reinfection with the same virus. So if we give a vaccine virus, the virus grows, it's eliminated from, the, from young pigs in a period of time after it's gone. If we challenge with the same virulent form of the virus, we see no evidence of viral growth at all. Whereas unvaccinated pigs are very still susceptible to infection. Okay, so, so homologous protection is good. This protection does not require neutralizing antibodies. Here, pigs were given virulent virus and waited 193 days. Okay, at 193 days, this series of 10 pigs, several of these pigs shown in the gray bars had no neutralizing antibody activity. Yet all of these animals were com completely resistant to reinfection, okay? Only one pig showed any evidence of infection, okay? So pigs with no neutralizing antibody at the time of challenge were completely resistant to reinfection. That's first. Second thing is what about the anamnestic response? This hallmark of memory where you see a huge increase in antibody pr production at the time of challenge. Well, we see in some cases no antibody production at all in completely resistant animals. We see variable responses, and even when things do go up, this is not a 100-fold increase. It's not the classic idea of an anamnestic response. So again, we know that immunity to PERS virus can get rid of primary infection. It can protect against rechallenge, but the mechanism is not clear. Clearly, there, for example, there is no anamnestic response. These are the antibody levels in those pigs in the previous slide, and we see no change in antibody level at all, okay? Clearly, these animals are resistant. It does not, in, there is no stimulation of additional antibody production. So to summarize what is needed to stimulate protection, live virus. Okay. That could change in the future, but at this moment, good protection in PERS requires exposure to, to replicating virus. What are the immune correlates of protection? Not known. So, what, so can, you, can you use immune correlates to predict vaccine efficacy? No, we do not know what those are. Okay. Now let's look at immunity to, cross, to, to, to other viruses. Again, the, if you want to con use immunology and vaccines to control PERS infection in the field, you have to have cross protection because vaccine viruses are of only one type and by the time they're approved for use, that particular virus usually is not around anymore. So you're always looking in the field at conditions of cross protection. Okay? And we know this is an important problem. This is a picture of the diversity of PERS viruses in the U.S. in 2007. Okay. 
and we see many different kinds of viruses and the lines, the horizontal lines, are measures of how different the viruses are. These viruses differ by about 20% in genetic sequence. We find European type 1 viruses in the US. They're almost 50% different. So huge diversity. Okay. We also know that new, vir new PERS viruses that will appear in the field and cause severe disease can come from anywhere in this diversity. Here we see a severe new kind of virus in 2001 in this group of the so-called 184. The virus we saw at the very beginning of the talk is in a different group shown here. Chinese, high, the high pathogenicity PERS virus is in this group. A severe form in the U.S. appeared down here. So again, these viruses can come from anywhere. Okay. So, do vaccines provide cross protection? The answer to that question is yes, they do. They provide cross protection. How good is it? It's not complete. But first, let's look at the evidence that, it, that there is some kind of cross protection. You take three highly virulent viruses, they can kill young pigs, they cause 50% lung lesions. Uh, they are very different from the vaccine virus used in this experiment. If we, in the blue, if we give naive animals these viruses, we see high levels of lung lesions, microscopic lesions. These pigs are very sick. If these pigs have been vaccinated, we see substantial protection, significant reduction. No one will argue, I think, that this, these pigs are less sick than these pigs. But they are not completely normal. Okay? Completely normal pigs have almost no lung lesions at all. So substantial protection, but it is not absolute. Okay? Berenger two years ago showed all of the data on cross-protection studies, 16 different experiments. Different, they varied the vaccine, they varied the time between vaccination and challenge. The challenge viruses were different kinds of highly virulent and, and standard PERS viruses. And they looked at percent lung lesions, so this is in the young pig model, the three week old model. And in every case, they saw a significant reduction in lung lesions. Some, now the amount of reduction sometimes was huge, other times was not huge. But there's really no question that if you give live virus to PERS, you can induce an immune response that does protect to some degree against rechallenge with any, almost any other PERS virus. Okay? So does PERS virus immunity give cross protection? Yes. Remember, it, it, the work we have done so far shows that cross protection is real. It requires some kind of live virus exposure that is not produced by killed vaccines, by autogenous vaccines that are inactivated. Okay. So then what is the role of immunity and control of PERS? Can we take this information and put it to use to actually uh, uh, provide better protection for pigs in the field? I will remind you that we have learned from herd closure that you can completely get rid of PERS and so herd closure is a method of eliminating PERS virus in farms that have it that is based on successful immunity. Okay? So we can get rid of PERS. We can also use vaccines as a treatment for pigs that have PERS disease. And this is a field example where pigs had PERS and the death loss in nursery, the nurseries was about 0.7% per week. Shrinkage is, is, is animals dying, okay? After a single mass vaccination of all of the pigs in the nursery, after 
three to four years of this kind of, of disease losses, disease losses were substantially reduced. So, so this is putting vaccine in as a treatment where virus was already in the nursery. And we saw sustained improvement in pig health and the level of improvement brought these pigs to the same status as a similar herd with no virus at all. And that's shown at the bottom. In percent mortality, there's no difference between vaccinated and, and, and healthy uninfected pigs, okay? So vaccine not only can, immunity can not only be used to get rid of, of, of virus and positive herds, it can be used as a treatment to reduce the consequences of infection. Similarly, one of the ways it works is it, it is reducing the level of infection. If you have less virus in a herd, you have less uh, shedding to other pigs. And this shows, again, that if you give virulent virus alone, you can detect shedding up to 127 days. If you give after you infect, you can give vaccine once or two times or three times and you can see that pigs no longer shed for 127 days. Okay, so it reduces the amount of virus being put into the environment. Okay. So what is the role of immunity and control of PERS? Local elimination. Ooh, that's down, must be down here. So this is local elimination. Treatment. Okay. You can go into a herd suffering an outbreak and reduce the consequences of infection, and you can use it for prevention, though prevention is not the best way in which to use the virus. <clears throat> so now I'd like to say a few words then about what the role of, of immunity is in an overall scheme or plan to control PERS virus disease in, in herds or in a region. And again, we saw first of all that herd closure, which is based on immune response, is completely effective in eliminating virus from a herd. But once you get rid of the virus, what can you do to keep PERS out? And recent work in the United States in the last two or three years has showed very convincingly that you can filter air going into pig barns and keep those animals free of PERS. This has been done experimentally by Scott D. And it's been done in the field by veterinarians primarily in the state of Minnesota. Okay. You filter all of the air being pulled into a barn with filters that are demonstrated to remove PERS virus. And, and you keep PERS out. There's been zero filter failures in, in the field in a period of up to three years. In the experimental conditions, there have been zero filter failures where a control unfiltered unit right next to it suffered seven breaks in a one year period out of 26 attempts, shown here, okay? The other thing that excites me about air filtration is you not only are removing PERS virus from the environment, you are protecting pigs against PERS, you are also protecting against other respiratory aerosol pathogens. These same animals suffered no mycoplasma breaks and greatly reduced influenza infection. So there are potentially tremendous benefits to providing a very clean atmosphere for pigs. You not only get rid of PERS, you get rid of other respiratory pathogens. So controlling PERS takes a commitment to, un to, to all aspects of swine production and using all of the knowledge you have. We know that PERS virus goes with pigs. The, the easiest way to get PERS is to bring pigs into a herd that are infected or to use semen from infected boars. If you, if you cannot stop that, then vaccines are not going to help very much because it guarantees infection. You need good biosecurity. 
the you can so you can and we can get rid of PERS. Not, we have good biosecurity with air filtration. We can keep the virus out. When something goes wrong, we have vaccines to reduce the severity of disease. And that is therapeutic vaccination in a treatment. We can use vaccines for prevention as well. Okay? But especially I think they're valuable as a treatment. So with this new information that we have acquired about the immunological processes involved in responding to PERS combined with a better understanding of how PERS moves around and, and means to prevent that, we have changed the situation regarding PERS disease in the U.S from something that people thought there was nothing we could do to knowing that we can control PERS. And this is because we know that immunity to primary in infection is effective, even though it takes a long time. We know that cross-protection is substantial. It is not complete, but it really helps the situation. This is important because PERS virus is changing rapidly. There will continue to be new kinds of isolates emerging in the field. We should anticipate that we will continue to see very severe disease-causing uh, forms of the virus continue to appear. So we need tools that will provide cross-protection. But we also, in addition to vaccines and immunology, we have uh, management tools which can really make a huge difference. So we can eliminate PERS by herd closure, okay? And it not only works, it tells us that immunity it can be completely effective. Once we get herds negative, we can keep them negative by biosecurity with air, air filtration, okay? Even though we do these things, or people may choose not to, not to spend the money that it costs to make these things happen, or their situation may make them uh, uh, not hopeful that, that they can get rid of PERS and keep PERS out. We know that vaccines can reduce the consequences of disease. We can manage the disease better with therapeutic vaccination. Okay? And because cross-protection provides a benefit, we can use preventive vaccination, although we cannot rely on it as the sole way of controlling PERS. So, so again, in conclusion, I think that in part the, a better understanding of immunology has taught us that, that we can do things to predictably improve the situation in PERS. We can use the knowledge, but we know that there are limitations for example, the age-dependent resistance to infection has implications for how well vaccines might work in older animals compared to younger animals. But it also means those animals are more resistant to field infection. So all of this information, again, makes me more hopeful about us getting the upper hand and, and gaining control over PERS. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Murto. Uh, we've got time for a few questions. Uh, we've got two colleagues who will be going around with microphones, so please don't be shy to ask questions. Uh, I have a question. As you mentioned, the biosecurity is very important for the trans uh, to stop the transmissions within the herd. So what I'm going to ask you is about what is a filter? Is that is, is a filter? Is, uh, is a very special filter? Can be used. So the question is, what filters can be used? Yeah, yeah. The The filters that can be used are described in the publications of Scott D. and Paul Yeske, and one of the sources of that information is the Lehman Conference from 2008. The 
The company that makes the filters that work effectively is called CamFill, small company in the U.S. These are not HEPA filters. They, they, are, they are much less expensive, but at this point, what I would, the message I would like to give you is this is a very active area of research. The, the cost of filtration is substantial if you compare it to no, no filtration, but, but those costs are changing. People are developing methods of use to reduce the, uh, uh, the filtration capability of filters so you can move more air through at lower cost, yet still keep the virus out. It's also clear that, that filters are rated by something called MERV. MERV 14, MERV 12, MERV 16. And, but, but filters from one, one manufacturer do not work the same as from another manufacturer. So I anticipate in the coming years that manufacturers will change their production uh, technologies so that, so that more filters will be widely available. So for any information I give you right now, even if, it, if I knew what I was talking about, would a year from now be incorrect. Okay, thank you. Any more questions? Uh, one over there. Uh, thank, you. thank you, sir. I'm Hardika from Bali University in Indonesia. Uh, I'm quite a newcomer in uh, peers uh, research in the university. But uh, what is the main uh, uh, venue for uh, viral transmission? If, if you say that the air filtration, air filtration will, will have a very significant impact on the herd status. Uh, I was thinking that the birds was transmitted mainly by pigs and pigs products. So air transmission, is, this, is it the main uh, cause of transmission of birds? Thank you. Uh, that's a very good question. The <coughs> my opinion is that the main source of transmission of PERS is pigs and pig products, semen. And that has the entire history of PERS. If you move infected pigs around, you move the, the virus goes where pigs go. If you stop that, then air then then transmission by air becomes important. But air transmission is, is dependent on the virulence of the virus. The, high, the more the virus grows in a pig, the more virus gets transmitted. So, so aerosol transmission is most important for the worst viruses. Okay? Viruses that are relatively low virulent are harder to transmit. So, the, so while pigs are the most important means of transmission, it's also easier to stop that. Okay, we know how to prevent pigs from going from an infected source to an uninfected source. And if we do that, then, then the most virulent viruses are the ones that are, are best controlled by, by uh, air filtration. One more question over here. Okay, Mike, you, you mentioned the virulence of 1.18.2 to saw and the preventing piglet. Uh, it sounds like extremely high. Uh, the mortality is 60 percent to saw and 100 percent to to preventing pigs. Is this figure based on clinical survey or artificial inoculation? It sounds like much higher than. Uh, what we have the so-called Chinese highly pathogenic pers. Is there any other uh, uh, pathogen involved? For example, PCV2. The the extreme virulence of of what we call the 1182 virus has been observed in the field in naive and in naive herds with 
no history of exposure to PERS or no, and no history of vaccination. And the data I showed were from the first two cases that happened. As often happens in new disease outbreaks, the first appearance is the worst. Okay? And, and, and typical levels of mortality are much lower, but still substantial. 10 to 20 percent mortality in finishers in, in, with this virus was common. But we also again see that if, if pigs have an immune status for PERS, if they've been previously exposed or a stable herd, uh, then we see lower mortality and less severe disease. But it's still in the range of 5 to 10 percent. One more question. Uh, yep. Hey. 呃，我是呢，来自中国的。我想问一个问题，就是说呢，现在那个呃，美国谷物协会在中国大陆呢，就是在推广那个空气过滤的方法来净化那个蓝耳病。呃，但是我个人感觉，这种方法推广以后，呃，可能会对整个行业会产生一个大的危害。呃，就是在一定程度上可能把蓝耳病净化了，但是对其他的病，从免疫学的从免疫学的角度来说。那么其他的病的免疫力怎么去建立？比如说 TGE， 呃 m y c r o p l a s m a 还有呢那个沙门氏菌，还有巴氏杆菌这些病。所以呢，我觉得呢，就是空气过滤这种方法在整个行业当中的推广应该慎重。呃，我不知道那么涛教授是怎么样看待这个问题的。Okay, now this is going to be tricky. <laughs> Did you get all of that, Dr. Morta? <laughs> now can we ask one of our、uh, Chinese colleagues to? To、um, to translate uh, Dr. Fan's uh, question, please. The question is: Well,、uh, the Green Society or、uh, U.S. Green Society is、uh, trying to introduce this filter、uh, air air filtering unit into a Chinese farm. The question is. You may help.、Uh, you may you you may help for for purse elimination, but what, what about the, for other pathogen? Be,、uh, I guess the filter unit could decrease the herd immunity in general. That could bring a risk to other pathogens such、uh, such as poison circovirus,、uh, salmonella. Salmonella.、Oh. Yeah. Well, other、uh, other pathogens in general. I think I have a different view on the question. the The only way to induce immunity is 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 to expose the pig to something that induces an immune response. So, if you eliminate certain pathogens from the herd, you reduce the level of immunity to those pathogens. If you keep the pathogens out, I consider that to be a good thing. So the idea for filtering air to keep PERS out is to keep PERS out. If you have no PERS, then you do not need immunity to PERS. Okay. The air filtration studies that have been been done clearly show that you also filter out other pathogens. I consider that a good thing. You can continue to vaccinate against those if you want. You still, you always have the option to vaccinate for PERS as well. But the reason people do air filtration is so that they have, they can remove that from their management. Okay, the air filtration probably does not work for enteric pathogens like Salmonella and Campylobacter because those are not transmitted by air. Okay, but when we talk about You know, understanding where infection comes from, a major source of infection with enteric pathogens is putting them into transport vehicles that previously carried animals with Salmonella and Campylobacter and enteric pathogens. So, if you if you have clean animals, you need to move them in clean transport vehicles. Okay, for example, did did that answer the question? 
Okay, I think it's now time to move on to our next.